select a good bait profile and I know this is super picky and you're probably talking about not much of a difference of sound but it could make the difference uh, I think lure profile is everything this is one of the reasons now this is an AM fishing lure sort of does the same thing as Boca Chica but I tend to lean more towards Boca Chica on, on situations like this because if you look at a Boca Chica and you look at the belly it's sort of like a piercing belly and it, it just hits the water a lot quieter than a lot of soft plastic lures so that's something to just I don't think it's a, a deal breaker when the fish are spooky super spooky they're spooky but I, I think when they're kind of like right in between they're like eh, I'm spooking a few here uh, lure impact has a lot to do with it um, I think that those little subtle differences on lure design can kind of go a long way so. One of the reasons I enjoy marsh fishing so much is just the complexity of it. Uh, you know, I think early on when I started fishing that type of habitat, uh, I figured, well, you know what, this is going to get easier. You know, we're going to funnel in uh, these fish, and uh, I realized that this is a lot more complicated and there's a lot more variables. I feel like marsh fishing is a little bit more susceptible to the game changing based off of certain situations and environments. And to this day, that stands true for me. Oh, I wish I had gotten that. That was a smash and a half. So what I use to catch fish in the marsh is probably far different from a lot of lures that really anybody would use in the flats. Uh, and when you're fishing clear water, you know, you, you find yourself kind of changing in and out, different tactics, a lot of spoons. Uh, uh, and then, of course, you're mixing in and out probably 101 different color combinations. So what can I help you guys out with on what's going to catch fish in the marsh? And uh, this first one is well, what you need to actually catch fish. And I'm going to put this pretty simple. This is across the board. Um, you know, your, your paddle tails and grub tails. Like you can get super technical on this and go out and get all kinds of weird offbeat stuff. But I can guarantee if you pick a good paddle tail uh, or a grub tail, that's going to go a long way. If there's one color I could advise on getting it would just be white or that milky white um, I know that sounds kind of crazy and when you compare like all these charts as far as what you should use on certain different water clarities um, just take my advice on this one and try just white and just run with it uh, chartreuse tails and all that stuff work great but if it's just that one color do I gotta say it again my other bit of advice would be to fish opportunistically and, and what that means is you, you gotta always be casting out in the marsh areas. Um, don't always rely just on sight casting. Uh, you, you'll find yourself missing out on a lot of fish and you know there's this argument, oh well that's not skill. Well there is a thing called fishing opportunistically which means if you know fish tendencies you can blind cast in certain areas there are some really good fish that you can pull out of the hat there and um, you're really missing out and doing yourself a disservice especially if you're in a tournament scene you should be casting a thousand times plus if you're not if you're not casting you know your arm off and you're doing more moving than casting um, nine times out of ten you're passing up a lot of fish that you probably didn't know that were there so that means fishing, uh, not just your, your super shallow flats where you can see fish, but fish all the other areas to and from point A and point B. The other thing that can really help you guys really dial in your own fishery and, and back marshes is uh, take the water into account and take your hatchings into account. And so what I mean by this is your marsh may have some fresh water spill-ins or spill-outs. Uh, or may not uh, you know there's different sort of setups rain and washouts can dramatically change water temperature all back there which can affect the fishing uh, so take that water temperature always into account and try and figure out if is it changing throughout the day or did it change yesterday than it does now and another big one would be uh, to understand your bait you know your uh, hatchings all that is super important super key it could be your deal breaker on changing out your bait profiles. If you are an angler that likes to uh, match the hatch, well then you need to go ahead and do that. 
but kind of keep color profile the same, right? Uh, the reason I throw a lot of white is because in most, most marsh systems, shrimp is always prevalent there. So I, I will tend to lean towards that color of the shrimp, that sort of off-white. Uh, but when things do change, like uh, let's say minnows and shad, you know, I will change things up. I'll go to a smaller bait profile and maybe change up the color just a little bit, but not much. One of the biggest ones, and I'll end it with this, is um, like don't be too much of a technical angler. A lot of guys, they love to just talk a good game on technicality. And what I mean by this is like knowing what bait does and fish tendencies are with high tide, low tides. Uh, moon phases and, and trust me all that is important but like don't be a stiffler on it because the marsh is one area where it can defy logic sometimes uh, and the reason for that is because there's so many variables so variable A tide and variable B bait you know could mean something completely different than moon tide and a different type of bait hatching uh, you know, and, and so when you turn those pages and chapters on different variables, uh, the endings are always different, and those endings are, are answers to solutions and problems on the water. Why, why were the fish biting last month when this happened, but now the exact same picture seemed to unfold it, and it didn't, it, you know, something else changed. Um, just always grind, always be on top of those fish to help answer those uh, issues that you have when when you're not catching fish because I can guarantee you that all the technicality in the world you can know all the basic techniques and technicalities and, and of how bait moves how fish move but sometimes the answer is a lot different and that's why we're always out there learning over and over and over despite what you read in a book what you hear on a podcast or a talk show or a fishing show like 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 this one right here <laughs> um, you know just um, do your own work, do your own research, do your own uh, on-field fishing, and come up with your own solutions, and always just try and figure things out. Have a great starting point, but don't be upset if, if it's just not the outcome you want. Uh, time on the water is, is everything. Actually, I'm naming this top 10 marsh advice and tactics, but honestly, I gave you guys a lot more than that. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Smash that like button. Drop me some comments. I would love to hear your response, uh, things that you do, things that work for you. And uh, share this video to anybody who is trying to get into the game, trying to improve their marsh game, maybe the tournament scene. I mean, I only got $4,000 checks sitting right behind me, right? Everything that you heard tonight paid out. See you on the next one.